You're watching Force 13's live streaming service. And this is Force 13 AU, five minutes past 12. And I'm joined in the studio again uh, with uh, Timothy uh, Ringo. He is on the east coast of Australia. And what's the uh, latest over there in the States, Tim? Uh, good morning to you, David, and good morning to our viewers in Australia. As we take as a live look here out of the Platinum Apartments complex there in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia this afternoon. As you have mentioned, we have crossed the top of the hour, midday afternoon there in Australia, 10 o'clock Eastern time here on the East Coast of the United States, as it has been a very quiet evening in terms of the East Coast. There have been a few storms that have rolled through the area. A lot of the heat that has been going on through most of the U.S. today is starting to die down, but it is going to be another scorcher tomorrow with more triple digit heat across the west coast of the u.s but a front is supposed to be coming through and will help cool down the east part of the united states that's what we have going on here in the states how about what is going on down in the land down under there extra layers of blankets and dunas featured once again this morning across many parts of new south wales and the act as minima dropped well below average for the second day in a row. A broad high pressure system sitting across the southeast has maintained clear skies, light winds and enhancing nocturnal cooling this into this morning. Although well, no, seven minutes past midday. Kuma Airport in New South Wales or it might be the ACT, dropped to minus 7.4 Celsius. Tim, minus 7.4, six degrees below average. Yeah, that sounds like it's going to be a very cold morning there at David, minus 7.4. Uh, runs about 17 degrees Fahrenheit once you bring it over to the Imperial units here in the United States. And just looking off of the Australian Broadcasting Newswire, and I know we touched base on this a couple hours ago, but definitely the point being driven home that COVID is still a very prominent feature there in Australia. Some key numbers coming in off of the uh, Newswire. 466 new cases there in New South Wales. 121 are linked to a known case or cluster, and another 345 cases are under investigation. 76 cases are in isolation throughout their infectious period, and only 19 were partially quarantined during their infectious period. And it has resulted in 43 new COVID-related deaths in the outbreaks in New South Wales. I know this is something that is a big concern worldwide. I know over here in the United States, specifically in the state of North Carolina, local government agencies and officials are urging not only local businesses in the bigger metropolitan areas, specifically the Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte, and even here in the Fayetteville, North Carolina area, for a lot of places to resume mask usage across the board uh, a lot of local school districts are fighting with that same notion on whether or not they want to have optional or mandatory masks that's at least what's going on with it here in the states i'm pretty sure there's a lot more information that you have regarding the COVID information david uh yes there is but before i uh, get to the local uh, or the latest medical information uh, on the screen, viewers, the top priority severe weather warning. Uh, it's for damaging winds. A cold front crossing Tasmania will bring strong westerly winds through Bass Strait during Sunday. Damaging winds averaging 60 to 70 kilometres an hour with peak gusts of around 90 kilometres an hour possible during Sunday afternoon and evening about the Otways and the Best uh, case. Winds expected to ease below the warning levels. 
during the evening, remaining fresh and gusty overnight and into Monday. And again, one Thaggy is on the warning list and we'll uh, keep an eye on that. So I'll just uh, switch back. And it's a live view from uh, one or two uh, live uh, streaming uh, cameras over in the New Caledonia region. Now, uh, recapping here in Queensland, uh, six new uh, cases in the last 24 hours, one case detected in hotel quarantine, uh, all, all linked to the Interpilly uh, cluster and uh, there's no one outside. However, of concern is a one-year-old sibling of a existing uh, case in hospital. Extreme concern. New South Wales hits higher new COVID case record. The crisis facing the people in New South Wales is worsening. There's no signs of it letting up. And fines for doing the wrong thing have gone up. The one figure I saw is 5,000 criminal offence. The other one is 3,000. And the uh, short few weeks uh, ago, the Premier was confident the state would regain freedoms once we hit a vaccination rate of 50%, but today that's gone out the window. So, uh, Victoria. Morning, I will say at the outset that today is the most concerning day of the pandemic that we've seen in New South Wales. I certainly uh, will not be detracting from that strong message. Uh, we had 130,000 tests overnight, and, uh, and very concerningly, we had 466 cases of community transmission. This is the largest jump we have seen in a night. And it's fair to say uh, that we are on a, uh, on a par of being uh, extremely concerned about the situation that we're in in New South Wales. Uh, at least 60 of those were infectious in the community, but that number is likely to go up given a number of cases are still under investigation. Uh, unfortunately, we had four deaths overnight and we extend our deepest condolences to each and every one of the family and loved ones. Uh, as I say every day, uh, we read out the statistics, but behind each statistic is a human being with loved ones they've left behind, and our heart goes out to all of them in these tragic circumstances. Uh, we had a female in her 40s who was in palliative care. She wasn't vaccinated at Concord Hospital who passed away. A male in his 70s, um, he was vaccinated but did have pre-existing conditions who died at Liverpool Hospital. A male in his 80s um, who died at Concord Hospital who wasn't vaccinated and a female in her 70s at Campbelltown Hospital but we've yet to get further details as her death was only uh, reported very recently and we'll be able to provide further updates as they come to hand. Uh, as I said the last few days, we are seeing stabilisation in the Fairfield and Canterbury-Bankstown local government areas with ongoing decline in growth of cases. Uh, and pleasingly, those two local government areas have gone from low levels of vaccination to at least 40% of first doses, which uh, contributes to the concerted targeted approach we've had in those local government areas. But the main suburbs of concern uh, in and around Western Sydney and South Western Sydney are, and I really want people in these communities to take heed, Blacktown, Duneside, Mount Druitt, Marylands, Guildford and Auburn where we're seeing the largest areas of growth. In regional New South Wales, concerningly, Western New South Wales, so Dubbo and the surrounding communities, has seen 26 cases overnight. Uh, and it is uh, likely that health advice today will ask us to extend the local government areas in lockdown. Most of far Western New South Wales is already in that situation, but there were a couple of local government areas outstanding. And I suspect we'll be getting that advice uh, later today. Hunter, New England had 16 cases overnight. Armadale, Tamworth and Northern Rivers still remain at zero cases, but obviously uh, 
Health is watching those circumstances. And whilst Armadale still has zero cases after a week, Health has recommended that that lockdown be extended for a further seven days to make sure uh, that there aren't any undetected cases given, uh, given the information Health received uh, has changed um, from those concerned uh, in the first few days of being detected as positive. So whilst those uh, three areas have had zero cases, Armadale, uh, the community of Armadale will be asked to stay in lockdown for at least start uh, the next week. So Tim, that's the latest from New South Wales, developing a bit major and uh, as mentioned my thoughts are with uh, everyone uh, that is being uh, severely impacted by this uh, horrible and deadly uh, virus and uh, social distancing. Uh, we have another week of uh, wearing masks. It's supposed to be lifted on, uh, I think, Friday. But if uh, uh, there's an outbreak, we still got 12, 13,000 in detention, uh, home quarantine. And the Queensland government is very, very concerned that um, they uh, we could have uh, people crossing the state border. So, Tim, it's been good having you here. And um, Tim and I, our viewers, uh, we've been uh, uh, chatting uh, whilst the automated stream and... Uh, well, uh, I'll just put it back to uh, Tim for any final thoughts and then we'll go back to the automated stream. And Force 13's fantastic musical collection. Absolutely, David. And just piggybacking off of the COVID concern that is going on there in Australia, the same concern is being expressed here in the United States. Uh, looking at the CDC numbers as of the last seven-day moving average, Average cases are up to about 115,000, which is about an 18% increase over the last seven days. And the big concern with that is even though about 71% of all adults in the United States are vaccinated, the big concern is that this Delta variant, which I know is what's impacting the Australian uh, provinces and territories there, has made it stateside here. And that new variant is causing a spike in new cases, primarily uh, among the unvaccinated and even among the vaccinated as well. There have been some reports where some that have been vaccinated from the original strain are getting infected with this new variant. So definitely be sure you are practicing your physical distancing. Make sure you are keeping your hands clean and doing everything you can to help prevent the spread. And as David said, we will throw it back over to the automated stream with our live shot of Sydney Harbor. Harbor. This has been your news break here on Force 13 Australia. <laughs>